Rex Buenausi is a medic with a mission. My friend, let's go. Helping blind people see again. Let's go to work. He's an eye nurse responsible for hundreds of remote villages scattered across 3,000 square miles of bush. So dusty. Malawi is seriously poor. In this area, there are no paved roads, no electricity and no phones. After an hour of tough riding, we arrive at a remote clinic. Ooh. Volunteers have put word out about Rex's visit. It's packed with people going blind, mainly because of untreated cataracts. Rex has to decide who can be helped. There's going to be a day of operations at the district hospital in a week's time. Okay. Yeah, and then the rough nigga did a little soaker. One person desperate for help is Emeresi Jassi, known as Jess. She walked for hours to get here. Jess has cataracts, a clouding of the lens in both eyes. Amai, this one is really Lina Onongega. Season got taken with the Tibango operation. You could do this one, Liza Onai. Jess needs urgent surgery on her right eye to have even a chance of seeing again. If she doesn't have this operation on the right eye, they do take the same course with, uh, as it happened in the, in the left eye. So next week's operation on her eye is vital. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the difference between her having sight and, and being blind for the rest of her life. If we miss her next week, the next time she comes, I think the eye will not be the same. Yeah. The three mile walk here from home was a huge struggle for Jess, despite help from her granddaughter, Adina. The hospital is 55 miles away. How are you going to get to Chikwawa? Most patients face this struggle to get to hospital, despite needing help fast. If Jess doesn't make it, there's no hope that she'll see again. Rex works for the Ministry of Health, which struggles for funds. It relies on the charity Sight Savers to pay for screening for cataract patients and the surgery that follows. Rex's next stop is 40 miles away. This time, some of the patients waiting are children. In the UK, childhood cataracts would be detected early and treated. In Malawi, that rarely happens. 14-year-old Rose Paolo has been brought here by her new stepfather, who'd heard Rex was coming to visit. Rosie, uh, take her this way, Didi. She's young and didn't eat it. Ah, Baba, who's going to ya? At the moment, she's virtually blind. Yeah, yeah maybe, sure. would you say 95, 96% blind? Yeah, almost 97%. Uren do yam bidira. Maso wasa nazime. Temene unali ndiza gazinga. Okay, good. Uh, the people is reacting to the light. There is some hope. 
After so many years with cataracts, it may be too late to remove them and restore Rose's sight. But Rex wants to give her at least a chance. Thank you, Rose. Thank you. But Rex knows even the two pound bus fare is probably beyond Rose's family. It must be really heartbreaking when you, you meet someone, you know, a child or a, 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 an old lady or mm. an old man, and you tell them, we have a cure for you, we can operate, mm. but you know that there's no way they're going to be able to make it to the hospital. Yeah, that's where the problem comes. Uh, when somebody cannot make it for the operation, and I feel very bad, more especially when it's also a child. I've come to see Rose in her village. Her family are trying to raise the bus fare to the hospital. If she could see, there's one thing she dreams of. Rose, what would it be like for you to have your eyesight um, back again? Rose's mum Jennifer says Rose often cries when the other children head off to school. Jennifer, do you worry about Rose's future? Whatever happens, the next few days will be the most important in Rose's life. I'm also worrying about Jess and how she'll make it to the hospital. The surgery is now three days away. If she misses it, she'll have lost her sight forever. Hey, when I see Jess, money. Jess is a widow and lives with her granddaughter. So this is where your grandma sleeps? I am family. So after you've woken your grandma up and you've brought her outside, what does your grandma do after that? I'm on carbon. Everyone in the village is hungry because the harvest has been poor. But Jess is in a really bad way because her blindness has stopped her from growing any food. She's become desperately weak. So when was the last time you were there? It's, it's an unbelievable existence. She can't see anything. Physically, it's tough, but emotionally and mentally, it just must be so demoralising. Is there anybody in the village who has a bike or, or, or a car that could help Jazz get to Chikwawa? These people are, are so poor, they're just living day to day. And I mean, I never thought I'd come to, uh, or it would come to a time where eyesight is a luxury. hours before the operations and the first patients are arriving at Chikwawa Hospital. Some have walked for three days to get here. Rex hopes in all 35 elderly patients will arrive, followed by 10 children a couple of days later. 
what's going to happen with these patients? We are going to accommodate them with the little space we have. Some will be on the floor. Some of these people will sleep on the floor? Yeah. It's a very different hospital to what I'm used to seeing. Um, you know, the, uh, the canteen is basically outside. They ran out of electricity. People using bikes as ambulances. I think it's really key for all of these people to have the surgery and for the surgery to work because if there's one place where it's not going to be great to have a disability or be blind, I think it's here in Malawi. I mean, life is tough. By that evening, many of the patients on Rex's list still haven't made it to hospital yet, including Jess. How do you feel about patients like Jess? If she doesn't have anybody to help her, then that's it, she misses out. I need to do something. Mm. I shouldn't miss this, uh, this opportunity because the other eye is completely blind. She needs to come for the surgery. The hospital only has two ambulances. Rex manages to get permission to use them to collect Jess and the other missing patients if there are no emergencies. So Rex, out of the 35 patients that are up for surgery, how many have come by themselves? Yeah, 14. 14, so that means you've got 21 left to collect. Yes. How are you going to do that? Yeah, that will be early in the morning tomorrow. That will be the first thing by 6 o'clock, I'll be out. So you're going to leave here at 6 o'clock in the morning? Yes. With two ambulances? Yeah, yeah. And you're going to go and collect 21 people? Yeah. Are you going to be able to do that? Yeah. The next morning, Rex only gets one ambulance. He's going to have to cram in 21 patients, and he's running late. Quarter to nine, and we're finally ready to go. Some patients are waiting at the clinic I first visited with Rex, and among them is Jess. How are you? Okay. Time to go. the moment Jess thought might never come. Rex prepares Jess for theatre. <laughs> With her left eye beyond help, today's surgery on her right eye has to work. There will be no second chance. The surgeon today is Dr. Petros Kayange. So now I'm going to make an incision right into the eye so that the cataract is able to come out. Is the patient awake? Yes, yes. But they feel no pain? No pain. Now you see it's coming out. Oh, yes. Out of the eye. So that's the clouded lens? Yes, yes. That's the lens that was affected by cataract? Yeah. It's incredible. And this is the lens that is going to give Jess her sight back? Yes. So you insert it back through the hole that you made? Yes. Do you have to close the hole again or... No, no, we don't. it repair itself? It's repair itself. Jess's operation takes less than 15 minutes. But she'll have to wait to find out whether the surgery has been a success. Dr. Kiangi plans to work flat out all day but he knows thousands of people still go untreated. Malawi, at the moment, there are only nine ophthalmologists for a country of uh, 60 million people. And how does it make you feel to know that there's still so many people out there who are blind and it could be prevented? Sometimes I feel hopeless because it's, it's not beyond, it's beyond our limits.
Rex has borrowed the hospital ambulance again to make sure that Rose and other children make it to surgery. They're taken to the city of Blantyre where there's a children's eye unit. Rose has been blind since birth. I'm trying to imagine what a successful operation would mean for children like her. They'll probably see the inside of the bandages and the light will start coming in. And then they'll see faces and they'll recognize the voices but not understand or put the voices together with the faces. And then slowly, everything will start making sense. That's what it's about. The world will start making sense once again for these kids. Surgery on children is done under general anaesthetic. Dr. Gerald Masukwa is the only eye surgeon in Malawi qualified to remove cataracts in children. He warns me because Rose was born blind, surgery may not work. Most of the development of sight happens by the age of two, mm -hmm. and if you interrupt it around, around that time, you, you, you end up with so many problems. And how does it make you feel to know that Rose's problem could have been preventable? A bit angry, but um, we can't focus on that now. I have to focus on the ones we can save. Dr. Masukwa is operating on both Rose's eyes today. So we, we have here our new lens. Yep, yeah, I see it. So I'm just trying to have it implanted. Suddenly the team become concerned. So we had a bit of a hiccup here. We are not happy with uh, the breathing. Rose's breathing has slowed down to dangerous levels. So I need to move quickly and get out. Okay, um, just give me two minutes, I'm done. She hasn't started breathing on her own yet. The anaesthetist is trying to revive Rose. It's extremely tense moments right now. Now the chest is moving up and down. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just really relieved now because it uh, looks like she's been stabilised. It's good news. That was very dramatic. Yeah, you don't want the heart to stop beating when you're operating. And uh, we're a bit scared. Rose has been through a lot today. She could have died in there. I really hope the surgery's a success. The next day, and it's the moment of truth for Rose. She'll soon know if she can see for the first time in her life. <laughs> Okay, good. This is a big, big moment. Even I'm feeling a little bit tense here. Okay. 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 The same plan, sweet. Yeah. What do you want, Nene? What do you do? <laughs> I wonder. Was your... Hello, Rose. Hello. <laughs> so can she see now? Yeah, she can see now. She... From uh, both eyes. From both eyes, and the vision will get better. Every passing day gets better. Rose is leading the way, so cool. Rusanga, I go and phone and does in Jang. Phone to go and have a bro that I'm going back on it. Do you even know what you're doing to Jang? Is that Sindabi? Can you see my hair? Can you touch my hair? Eh. Hello. 
<laughs> Do I look funny? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> And there's someone she's never seen. Come on. <laughs> what do you see, Rose? In Chikwawa, Jess is about to find out if she's got her sight back. What did you say? I can tell that Jess can see because she looks at the people that are speaking to her. I mean, she looks at me, she looks me in the eye, and I think she's just still trying to absorb this new world that has returned to her. The first thing Jess wants to do is hold her great granddaughter, Mary. Just a few hours later, Jess returns to her village. She's no longer bent double. She's walking tall. What is it like to be back in your village? Hey, good, come and say hello to Jess. And then for everyone, the final proof she can see again. Jess has not just got her sight back, she's got her friends and her family and her future back. <laughs> Rex and the team have transformed Jess and Rose's lives, but there's still an estimated 15,000 people with cataracts in Malawi to find and to help. Thanks for watching this classic Unreported World episode. Click the logo to subscribe for more award-winning documentaries from the Unreported World team. We upload videos every Wednesday and Sunday, keeping you up to date with content from all over the world.